kids. So welcome to the Heart Smarts Community Education Series. My name is Dr. Nasolo Teddy, and I am the director of the Heart Smarts program at New York Presbyterian Hospital. Um, tonight, we have an amazing set of presentations for you. Um, this evening, we will be focused on mental health and brain health. And um, we have Samantha Saltman joining us again um, this evening. And um, if you all remember, she presented last year, gave us an amazing presentation, and then she invited us to that summit um, that she had where we were introduced to a lot of um, the people that we worked with this year. So um, Shane Sterling was in that summit and also um, Lisa Smith was in that summit. So really amazing people. So she has an initiative that she does that focuses on brain health and um, getting people to understand better the connection between brain health and nutri nutrition and really being proactive um, about taking care of their brain health. Um, for those of you in the Heart Smarts program, your video that you had to watch today um, has to do with whole foods, plant-based nutrition and its impact on the brain, on dementia, on Alzheimer's disease and everything. And um, March is Brain Health Awareness Month. And so that's why Sam is here tonight. After Sam's presentation this evening, um, we would like to find out from you all if you'd be interested in doing a longer series with her where we really delve into um, brain health in more detail than we do tonight. But let me just introduce her. Um, Samantha Salmon, founder of rawfoodmealplanner.com, is a certified integrative nutrition coach and brain health licensed trainer specializing in brain health, weight loss, and more. Samantha offers holistic health approaches focusing on nutrition and lifestyle. She hosts the Raw Food Health Empowerment Podcast and is the author of You Can Afford to Be Healthy. And she's a good sport because she was dancing on the screen with Dr. Baptiste when we had our February Heart Month for, um, kickoff. So Sam is all of that. And she's going to be at the conference um, on March 24th in Alabama if you guys want to meet her in person. So I will stop talking. And Sam, you are on. Thank you so much. I love that introduction. Thank you, Dr. Tate. I really appreciate it. Thank you, all of you, for your time and attention. I'm really excited to share this information with you. Um, I would like to share my screen, and it says it's disabled right now. Yep, I'm going to make you co-host. Give me one moment. All right. So in the meantime, um, I am your guide on this journey tonight. Um, you can go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, let's see here. Share. All right. Maximize. Can you see my screen where it says yes. mastering the mind? All right. Awesome. All right, cool. So tonight we are diving deep into the brain. We are going to master the mind. I'm sharing with you an introduction into the brain warrior's path I'm your guide on this journey, Samantha Salmon, Certified Integrative Nutrition Coach and Brain Health Licensed Trainer. And um, as Dr. Teddy mentioned, you know, this is uh, the foundation, the introduction to a longer uh, program. And this program has its own mission. The mission is to build a community of brain warriors who will create lasting health, teach others, and transform the health of our world. I also have my personal mission, which is to eradicate type two diabetes in this country. And um, what inspired this journey for me is my grandma. Last time I came into this space, I shared the story of my grandma, who's right here on the right, uh, Miss Iris Hilton, born and raised uh, in Jamaica, West Indies, who came to this country and um, she went from uh, country environment in Jamaica to uh, urban environment in New York City. I think she first moved to Brooklyn and then they, my family ended up in Queens. But I watched her um, during my, my childhood suffer uh, with type two diabetes, having to prick her finger every, every morning. And then eventually it got upgraded to a long insulin shot in the belly. Her pancreas was no longer producing insulin. So she had to get that shot. And then eventually her big toe turned black. Within two weeks from that, she was home on hospice care, dying due to complications from type two diabetes. In that moment, I learned that food is not worth the pain and suffering I watched my grandma go through. Not only did I watch her be a human pincushion to the medical system, but also, you know, I knew that, uh, 
you know, food was the cause of all of this pain and suffering. You know, she, she dealt with the pain while she had type two diabetes. And then when she was home on hospice, she was crying out in pain as well. It was a long drawn out painful death for her. And it was a very traumatic moment for me. That was um, 2004, my first year of college. Fast forward uh, uh, three, four years later, 2008, I graduate, I move to the Bay Area, and um, I find veganism in this moment, particularly Dr. Neil Barnard's book, how to um, his book, uh, Dr. Neil Barnard's program for reversing diabetes. And in this book, I learned that you can actually reverse type two diabetes in two weeks using a whole food uh, vegan diet. And I was on a whole immerse, emotional journey with this book because on the one hand, I was outraged. Like I watched my grandma suffer with this disease for over a decade and no one told us that if she just cut out meat, dairy, eggs, that um, her disease could have been reversed. Because like I said, at first she was just checking her blood sugar. Then eventually her pancreas died and she had to get insulin shots. That whole time before then, we could have solved this. And even after then, there was still a chance, but no one told us. Um, but that that book also lit a fire under me because uh, I did not want to go through the pain and suffering I watched my grandmother go through. So I decided to go vegan. Now, I grew up really uh, chubby as a child, right? And probably because I didn't like vegetables, probably because we had two kitchens, there was always food around. And uh, food was entertainment for me. Food was fun. So I go vegan and I still don't like vegetables. So of course I end up gaining 20 pounds and I hit the max weight of what the medical charts consider to be a healthy weight range for my height. And I did not feel comfortable in that body. I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm moving in the wrong direction. I know I'm eating in a healthy manner with this vegan diet, but I'm, I'm gaining too much weight. And I realized it was because I basically cut out meat, dairy, and eggs, but I did not start incorporating vegetables because I didn't like vegetables, right? So I was eating a lot of pasta and bread and that pretty much put on the 20 pounds. So I was like, okay, how do I incorporate vegetables and not hate my life, right? Because I love food. <laughs> so um, I, I came up with the idea to incorporate green smoothies because I'm like, okay, I like fruits. And if I put some kale and spinach in a smoothie, you know, it will mask, um, the fruits will mask the flavor of the greens. And that's how I started. During this time, you know, I'm in the Bay Area, living in downtown Oakland. I'm walking distance from Whole Foods, walking distance from Trader Joe's. And Cafe Gratitude is nearby, which at the time was a 100% raw vegan restaurant. And I got to try raw gourmet food and I loved it. I was so fascinated, like, wow, look what they're doing with fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and spices. Oh my gosh, they're making pizza, they're making lasagna, they're making spaghetti, they're doing all sorts of things, right? With raw foods. And I was so excited by it. And so, you know, just, I don't know. I was just in love with the whole idea, the, the the cuisine, the fact that it's tasty, enjoyable. I thought it was so innovative. And um, I felt the energy and the high vibration and the, the place of Cafe Gratitude was just the whole vibe, right? It was just positive energy all around. You get this nice alkaline water and the bottles had like these positive affirmations on it. All the items on the menu was positive affirmation. So it had a whole like good feeling about it, right? So I went to the library. I got a few books on raw food cuisine. I started making things. At the time, I was picking up books by um, Jennifer Cornbleed, uh, Annie Fio, and Sarma from Pure Food and Wine, who had a, um, a raw vegan restaurant in Manhattan, um, and um, just played around with recipes at home and just really fell in love with it. My husband was also on the same journey as myself, and we got so excited about it that two years later, 
we moved to Chicago and opened our own raw vegan establishment, Ertilin Cafe. So that's the uh, photo you see at the bottom right there with the whole team. And we expanded to like two locations, 14 team members. That's my dad next to me at the bottom, you know, who came to help us with the growth of everything, just creating a really cool, tight-knit community in Chicago around this thing we were so passionate about, raw foods, healthy foods, organic foods. Uh, so that was 2011, we opened that business. And 2014, 2015, I started coaching. Now, when I started coaching, I, I was constantly hearing from people, I can't afford to eat clean. I can't afford to buy organic, all this stuff. And I just did not understand that because up until that point, the most I had made in a year was like $45,000, $50,000 a year. So I'm like, how is it that I'm able to afford to eat this way? And other people are telling me they can't, who I know make at least how much I was making at the time. So I wrote a book, You Can Afford to Be Healthy, in response to that. So that, that was my... Um, introduction into the health and, and wellness world in terms of like uh, my professional experience, like what, you know, how I got into it. But after we left Chicago, I moved to LA. This is 2017. I moved to Los Angeles and I get involved in um, community development and specifically equitable food oriented development. Um, and I worked on food policy. I even helped pass uh, food policy, specifically the good food zone policy, which um, aims to support uh, small healthy food businesses like the one I had in Chicago in um, underserved, under-resourced communities that are also looking for healthy food. So the people in, in those communities don't have access to healthy food, and yet we have small business owners who are looking to provide it. They, they may have a, a food business already, and this uh, policy provides the infrastructure, the support for those businesses and for the community. Um, while I was working on this, I was also working with a team that um, is focused on alternatives to incarceration. And at the time we were having a lot of conversation around abolition. And I just could not understand or wrap my head around the concept of abolition. Like how, how could we live in a world where we don't have prisons and we're not putting people in jail, right? Because I we had witnessed the whole Dylan Roof situation where he sat in a church and went through Bible study and shot up everyone in the church, right? So how how do we get to a place where we don't incarcerate people like this? Um, but I ended up on a, a webinar with an attorney named Derricka Purnell uh, that uh, my church was hosting. So I mentioned I used to live in Chicago. That's where I had my business. And when I moved to Chicago, I started attending the Obama's church, Trinity United Church of Christ, and they have a lot of webinars. Um, and I attended this one. They had uh, Derricka talking about her experience growing up in an urban environment where police is called for all sorts of things that really escalate an issue where other people are better um, prepared to serve in that moment, like mental health um, workers or uh, social workers or you know other people with with that skill set that's needed in that time, as opposed to someone that is, you know, holding all sorts of weapons, right? It tends to escalate. And with her talk and reading her book and her experience, it started to click to me like, oh, okay, I could see, I could see why there is a need to move in this direction. But what really cemented it for me was reading this book, The End of Mental Illness by Dr. Daniel Amen. In this book, I was just totally blown away because basically what Dr. Amen has done, he has merged brain spec imaging, which is like, it's a, it's a type of um, scan on the brain where you get to see blood flow to the brain, right? And um, with the studies he's done, doing these scans, he's done large scale um, studies on NFL players. That's how we now know that uh, concussions can cause all sorts of issues with the brain. 
um, including Alzheimer's, dementia, temper, anger, outbursts, and things like this. Um, he's done a lot of studies on um, imprisoned populations, you know, folks who are incarcerated, folks who are uh, facing prison sentence, because he's been called many times to speak, um, uh, to talk on different cases that come to trial. You know, someone has a situation, they do something. What what can the uh, the uh, defense <laughs> use as the reason why did this person do this thing? But with all the, the work that he's done and the scans that he's done, and I'm going to show you some of them in a minute, um, we get to understand that there are many things that can affect the physical functioning of our brain. So it goes beyond even um, like uh, what we have historically perceived as mental health and mental wellness, right? Nutrition plays a huge role in it. And our lifestyle plays a huge role in how our brain works. And our brain basically manages everything we think, feel, and do. And so from a health perspective, it's important, right? Because diabetes and obesity is a risk factor for an unhealthy brain. But also when we think about the larger effect on the community, um, if everyone approached their health in a brain healthy manner, we would have safer communities, which would equate to healthier communities. And I hope to make that point even more clear as we go on uh, tonight. Imaging changes everything. When you have the scans, when people get um, tested, they see images, right? It motivates them to change. They can see what's going on and take action. We take things seriously when we see. When we see someone with a broken ankle, we have empathy for them, right? But when someone has um, is irritable, angry all the time. We call them a jerk, right? We say, oh, this person's rude. They're nasty person. And there's no empathy for that person, no understanding. But if we saw the brain, which is causing it, then we may have some empathy and understanding for them. This is, a, uh, um, and I just want to check the chat real quick. Uh, and, and we'll have a Q&A section later too. But this is a, a spec scan showing on the left-hand side what a healthy brain looks like, right? This is nice, beautiful blood flow to all parts of the brain. On the right-hand side is what someone who's experienced two strokes, what their brain looks like. You can see um, the whole right side is basically eaten out. You have the prefrontal cortex, which is basically the CEO of your brain. This is the area of your brain that is thinking through consequences. So like, let's say, you know, you're on a health journey, right? And you're like, I'm not going to eat any more refined sugar or processed food. But if your prefrontal cortex is not working, is not getting blood flow, is not getting any nourishment, right? That's how nutrients get to the brain is through the blood. Um, then you're not actually thinking through those consequences. You're like, what the heck? I don't care. Let me just eat whatever I want to eat, right? Um, and you see here on the on the right hand side, there's the temporal lobes is all dropped out there as well. The temporal lobes is the part of the brain right by your temples, right? That's the part of the brain where um, anger, um, mood stability, all of that is being managed right there. Right. So you can see someone has two strokes, their brain ends up looking like this. Right. Um, how that can explain some of their their moods and decision making. Right. Maybe their decision making doesn't seem quite wise to some of us. Right. Or their 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 mood is so bad, it's causing disharmony in the family, in the relationship. Right. Because they're the physical functioning of their brain is not right. Here you see on the right-hand side, the brain of someone who's experiencing Alzheimer's disease. It looks horrible, right? Look at all of that function that's dropped out. This on the right-hand side is a concussion. This is a, um, um, a traumatic brain injury, right? So obviously the prefrontal cortex here was punctured, but this person survived. Um, but you can see this person's going to have a lot of issues in, in their life and most likely is experiencing issues because typically people don't go through this scan unless there's a good reason. 
uh, for it, right? Something is going really bad in their lives and they're looking to get support. But, you know, a lot of times we talk about our health, like, oh, it's just a function of age. You know, we're all going to get dementia. We're all going to get Alzheimer's. But brain aging actually is optional, right? It's optional. We can nourish the brain, take care of the brain with a healthy diet and healthy lifestyle um, to help it get well. Of course, you cannot bring dead tissue back to life, but there's a lot of room for improvement because it takes about 20 to 50 uh 20 to 50 years for Alzheimer's and dementia to even um, develop. So we have a lot of time there to fix. We get signs to fix things. Your brain is involved in everything that you do, right? So this is, this is like my plea to you is like we eat clean to make sure our brain gets the proper nourishment, to make sure that we have harmonious relationships, to make sure when we show up to work, we are you know, God's example in this world. You know what I'm saying? We're able to deal with people, love on people, have empathy and hold space for folks with patience and compassion because we have the capacity to do so because our brain is working well, right? An unhealthy brain does not have the capacity to do that. We are living in a really toxic food environment, right? With the real weapons of mass destruction being highly processed food, pesticide-laden food, low-fiber food, food-like substances. Because I say that, you know, there are things in the grocery store that we call food that actually is not food. There's a book that's out that's called um, Fat, Sugar, Salt, right? And the, the premise of the book is that, you know, the food giants have hijacked our brain to keep us addicted on these things that, you know, over generations, our bodies um, have and brains have come to really seek out love and want to hoard, right? Fat, sugar, and salt. But I have never heard of a person who's addicted to avocado, which I'm wearing today, my avocado earrings, um, celery, or mangoes, right? I'm gonna check the chat. Any of you know anybody who is addicted to, to avocados, celery and mangoes do you know anybody like that because i've i've never heard or seen anyone like this exactly exactly there's nobody addicted punching holes in walls or you know sneaking out late at night trying to get their hands on avocados you know it's the chemicals right chemicals make folks act crazy <laughs> or what we consider to be, you know, out of the norm, not neurotypical, right? Um, and it's the chemicals in these food because this, these food-like substances, they're, it's not food. It's not food. And it's being marketed to us everywhere on TV, on YouTube now, there's all sorts of chem um, commercials for this stuff on, you know, now we're like, I decided a long time ago that I was going to save money and live my life instead of watching other people live theirs. And I cancel cable, but this, all this commercial has followed me into streaming services, right? And this, it's the, the poisonous behavior so pervasive. We've celebrated recently, uh, I think it was National Obesity Week. And there were so many articles about how this obesity crisis is not just a national one. It is a global issue. I would love to hear from you all, like, where are you seeing in your community right now people push unhealthy foods? Because I know in my church growing up, you know, we get a good sermon. Yes, we trying to do right by the Lord. And then after church, we go down into the into the main hall and the food being served is going to send us right to Jesus quicker than we had planned. Right. Yes. In school, you have. Um, even with the um, the Girl Scout cookies and stuff like this, all that refined sugar. Yeah, we could do better. And beyond the unhealthy food is the stress, right? The toxic news. It affects our brains because not only does unhealthy food constrict blood flow to the brain, but stress does as well. So historically, right, which is how our body has learned to adapt 
and and learn how to function. This is how it's operating. Is that we are when we are perceiving a stress. Historically, we're being chased by a carnivore, right? A lion, a bear, a tiger, who's going to eat us, right? So we are stressed in that moment. And so the body knows, oh, we got to increase cortisol. And then cortisol sets off an increase of insulin. Why? Because we need to run. And in order for us to run, sugar is released into the extremities, right? so that we can, to power the muscles, right? Because the muscles, they're running on glucose. So when the sugar is released, insulin is also released to usher that sugar into the muscle cell. So you have high uh, cortisol and now high insulin. This is an acute situation. We're being chased by a bear, okay? That's acute. That's a short-term stress, luckily, right? But nowadays, what we're experiencing is chronic stress, which is causing insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is you have high sugar in the blood, high insulin in the blood. And there's so much fat in the muscle cells that the sugar is not able to get in there, the insulin's not able to get in. And over time, this really hurts the brain, it hurts our blood vessels, our cardiovascular system. There's tons of issues, right? We get diabetes. Um, and when it impacts the brain, it's Alzheimer's. They're calling that type three diabetes, right? But most of the people I work with, right? Other than the type two diabetes and pre-diabetes folks, I work with a lot of people who have 50 uh, plus pounds to lose. They're also dealing with insulin resistance. I have insulin resistance on both sides of my family, which is why I tended to be on the chubby side, right? Chronic stress will cause this can cause it, right? Because when we are perceiving stress on the outside, we are having hormonal changes on the inside. It's a physical manifestation of this stress going on. And this is how it can damage our body. So when we have this 24 seven news cycle that has us afraid to go outside and take walks in the day to get vitamin D, to get oxygen in the lymphatic system moving, it's a problem. And then we have addictive technology like our cell phones and things, you know, keeping us up at night. We're scrolling. I talk to a lot of people, nurses even, first responders who they're so tired from the day that the the 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes, an hour can go on to that they're on their phone before they fall asleep is their way of just calming down and just detaching themselves from responsibility, right? But what ends up happening is that blue light from the screens messes up our circadian rhythm. And so we're not getting deep restful sleep. Deep restful sleep is when the brain gets to clean itself, right? So you can see how this constricts, it, it makes for a very unhealthy environment for the brain and impacts the, the function of our brain. And like I said, your brain is involved in everything you do in everything you are. When your brain works right, you work right. When your brain is troubled, you are likely to have trouble in your life. A 2023 study highlighted that the significant mental health impact of diabetes, especially on younger individuals, we have younger people more and more um, getting diagnosed with type two diabetes and dealing with obesity right? And it's causing mental health issues for them, stress, anxiety, depression. A study forecasts 673% surge in type 2 diabetes among Americans under the age of 20 by 2060, right? So this is adding to racial health disparities because the highest prevalence is in the Black community, right? We are having a mental health crisis along with this obesity crisis. And there's a really interesting um, article that I read in the American College of Lifestyle Medicine written by uh, Dr. Gulati that I really wanna share with you about a, a patient she worked with by the name of Miss Carmen. Miss Carmen is a woman who faced significant challenges in managing her diabetes. Initially, she was prescribed two types of insulin for multiple daily doses but she struggled to even take one dose daily. And the struggle was compounded when her son was diagnosed with type two diabetes at the age of 12. He's now 16. So he's been dealing with this for four years. 
battling severe depression, which had led to a suicide attempt in 2017 and hospitalization, Carmen found her condition impeding her ability to manage her diabetes effectively. She then uh, revealed that she had a deep-rooted comfort in consuming soda, a habit that began in her childhood and persisted into adulthood, leading her to secretly hoard soda away from her family. Maybe some of you know people like this, right? However, a pivotal change occurred after her initial appointment when she met with Dr. Gulati. Carmen drastically reduced her soda intake from over two liters a day to just one can of diet soda every other day. And this significant shift resulted in a weight loss of eight to 10 pounds, a success she managed to sustain even though the indulgences of a Thanksgiving even through the indulgences of a Thanksgiving vacation. And when she was asked about her motivation for this drastic change, she and her husband shared that the desire for improved mental health and a relief from depression is what motivated them. Dr. Gulati, who's, um, who was you know, her doctor, emphasized the direct impact of glucose levels on mood and a piece of it and that piece of advice really resonated with her and that understanding coupled with the tangible benefits she experienced really solidified her commitment to her health this story like is just it really encapsulates how connected this whole thing in, is right these are not separate issues the mechanism causing all of these issues, diabetes, obesity, Alzheimer's, depression is the exact same. And the, the cure is the same. It's a healthy lifestyle. But in order to get there, we need to become masters over our brain and body, right? So I wanna go through with you the seven steps to create mastery over your brain and body. With the first step being mindset mindset you have to know your why if you don't care about having a healthy brain or a healthy body you're not going to do it right you're not going to do it if you don't care about it you're not going to take any steps change is hard it's so much easier to keep doing the same thing over and over right and getting the same result but in order to get health we have to be about that lifestyle right so I would love to see in the chat your why what is your why for being here why did you lean in today to be on this call with Heart Smarts to learn about mental health first aid, to learn about brain health? Why is having a healthy brain and a healthy mind important to you? I would love for you to share that in the chat. And while you're typing in the chat, um, I'll talk about step number two, assessment. We need to assess where we are, right? So we know what our starting point is and where we're looking to go. So that's assessment, assessing where we are right now. And I'm going to share with you in just a couple minutes um, what to look out for doing that assessment. I love seeing what I'm, it controls your mood. Yep, exactly. Caleb says, I want to live well into my hundreds healthily. And we can. That's the great thing. We know what it takes to get to 120 and thrive, not just survive. We want to thrive in this life. Dianette says, I want to live longer and be healthy while doing so. Yes, we have family that love us and need us and, and, and depend on us. You know, regardless of how old you are, I can tell you, I don't have any kids, but I'm a child and I am a grandchild, right? We need parents and people who love us and support us for just immense for emotional support. So you taking care of your health, you know, I've talked to so many mothers who say, I can't do it because my kid eats this way, my husband, da, da, da. And it's like, listen, you saving you is saving the entire family. We learn from watching you. You model the behavior, right? Number three is sustenance. This is the nourishment for our body, the actual food that we're consuming, the nutrition that we're feeding ourselves. Number four, training and habits, all the things we need to do to have a healthy brain and healthy body. Five, essence. Turn your pain into purpose. What is your reason for living and being on this earth? When you have this, it grounds you to stay con in conviction 
on the journey because the journey is going to be, you know, ups and downs. Anytime you're trying to do a new thing, it's not a straight line. It's not necessarily easy all the time. It may be simple, but it's not always easy, right? What is your essence? I would love for you to share in the chat. Turn your pain into purpose. What is your reason for being healthy? You know your why, but dig deeper. Dig deeper. What is what is a, a bigger mission beyond you? For me, it was very painful to watch my grandma go out like that. I didn't feel like she deserved that, you know? She didn't deserve the suffering and the pain for the amazing role model and woman that she was for me, for my family. She was light, you understand? She was light, she was love, she was a powerhouse, you know? And yet she had to go through all this physical discomfort. That did not seem fair, which is why I wanna warn everybody you can reverse diabetes in two weeks, type two diabetes, you can reverse in two weeks. This is my essence. Number six, responsibility. And responsibility is basically you taking agency for your own life. Responsibility is our ability to respond, right? So we take the power back. We will not be victims of the system right? When we step into a doctor's office, we are partners with the doctor, right? We are not under the doctor. You know, this is a partnership. And you come with your own lived experience of your body, how it's operating. I always tell my clients, you know, monitor your urine, monitor your feces. What's the color? What's the frequency? What's the shape? What's the smell? Know about you. Be well-versed on you because you're the expert in you. You come there with that information and with that knowledge and with that intention to be a partner with your doctor, you will get way better results than someone who's just giving up their life to the system. You understand what I'm saying? I hope y'all picking up what I'm putting down. Paula shared, my why is from experience. My aunt has diabetes and dementia, both believe are the results of poor eating habits. She's the reason for me wanting to improve food intake. This is beautiful. Very good. Awesome. And then number seven years long, because this is not a diet, okay? It's not a quick fix. Anybody can get type two diabetes. You can even look like you have a healthy size according to the BMI charts, which we're gonna talk about. Maybe you, you're you within healthy range and you could still get type two diabetes, right? Why? because it is a lifestyle disease. That's what most of our chronic disease we're dealing with is, is lifestyle, nutrition and lifestyle. So anybody could get it at any time. So it's not like you do a thing, you end up in relapse, you, you have great hemoglobin A1C numbers and you go back to doing what you was doing before. No, this is a whole lifestyle. So you gotta be in it for the long haul. So I would love for you, this will be your homework, Oh, Caleb, let me stop share because I, I don't think I'll be able to take that off the screen. Um, but you want to, like I said, you want to dig deeper with your why, right? And go go deep with it. Go down five levels. I want to be healthy because, you know, I watched my grandmother suffer in pain. Um, and I don't want to deal with that pain. Why? I want to enjoy my life experience. Why? I love seeing me in a fit body. Why? You know, <laughs> play this game with yourself. Write down your five whys, right? Journal about it and have this paper with you every day because there will be days that you want to give up and you just want to do what everybody else is doing, right? This is what's going to help keep you motivated on the journey your five reasons why. Monique, um, can you put, I did not get to take notes that quickly. Oh, that's fine, yes. Uh, you could always email me at info at rawfoodmealplanner.com and I'll share these slides with you. Now, one of the exercises I do with my um, clients is called the one page miracle, right? So um, in addition to knowing our why, we want to map out where we want to be. What do we want our life to look like in six months or a year from now? What do I want in my relationships? What do, and, and you know what? Everything 
revolves around relationships, our health, because we are like the five people we spend the most time with, right? So our health is reflective of that. Our finances typically are is reflective of that. Um, our spiritual life, sometimes a lot of times, is reflective of that, <laughs> you know? So if you want to make a change, you know, one of the things is to make sure you around the people who actually have or on progress to getting what it is that you want in your life, right? But first you have to know what you want. This, when you know what you want out of life, is that's like your North Star. It's showing you the direction that you want to go in, right? So you map all of this out. And like I said, you need to know your numbers, have an assessment. And what numbers do we want to track? Body mass index. Now, I put this with a little asterisk because BMI does not tell the whole story. Uh, hi, Sharice. Yes info at rawfoodmealplanner.com and I'll share it again at the end. Um, BMI basically only looks at your height and your weight, right? And if according to the medical charts, at least this is how I do it. I don't know how other health coaches out there do it, but um, if my client is in the obese range, according to the medical charts, right? These BMI charts, I have one strategy to help them release excess fat, and it's very simple, right? If they are um, just in the overweight range, then we're looking a little deeper, right? Body mass index is not giving us the full picture. We need to look at body composition at that point, right? Like for me, for example, at 140, I, I told you, I went vegan, I gained 20 pounds, right? Went raw, lost 25 pounds, <laughs> right? Got down to 115. That was the, the smallest I had ever been in my life up until that point, right? I didn't even know I could get that small. I had to buy new jeans and everything. I was like, what? Um, but there was something really like, there was, there was uh, some important things about my diet and lifestyle at that point that got me to 115 that is really important for folks who are trying to lose that last five, 10 pounds, right? You're either in your healthy weight range or you're overweight. You have just this excess fat that you're trying to release. You're not obese, right? But in this, in that aspect, understanding your body composition will help you dial that in, right? So I, I want to ask you all, what do you think makes up your weight? Because a lot of people, when they come to me, they're like, I want to lose weight. What do you think makes up your weight? Tell me in the chat. What makes up your weight? Anybody know? Obviously we have organs, right? Okay, we have fat, okay. What else do we have? Muscle, we have bones, we have water, right? So when people say they wanna lose weight, well, I don't think they want to lose bones, right? And water, we don't really have too much uh, control over water. I mean, we kind of do, but we kind of don't because the body is always regulating that based on its needs, right? Um, and then we have muscle, which we definitely don't want to lose because muscle burns fat. And the more muscle development you have, especially on your lower body, the, the sharper your cognitive function. So we definitely don't wanna lose that, right? So it's really the fat we wanna lose, right? And BMI doesn't tell you how much fat you have, <laughs> right? BMI doesn't tell you how much fat, doesn't tell you how much muscle, but when you start looking at your body composition, you could start to fine tune, okay, I need to dial the fat down. I see my body fat percentage is a little too high. My muscle mass a little too low. Crank that up. My water may be retaining a little bit too much water. You know, what's going on there? Maybe uh, it could be too much salt, right, in my diet. So you want to, like, tune in a little bit. Blood pressure is important to know. Fasting blood glucose. We talked about hemoglobin A1C, just to make sure you're not uh, diabetic. Um, cholesterol, C-reactive protein. We talked about, uh, no, we, we, we talked about it. We didn't talk about this. So... When your body is having, um, like if you have uh, a cut, right? Something's happening, the body gets inflamed, right? This is a normal 
process and it's a it's a healthy normal reaction right for the body to to have some inflammation in an acute situation but what we don't want to see is chronic prolonged inflammation right and so with the c reactive protein this this is produced when there's inflammation in the body. And this is a test you can actually test for to see if there's inflammation, chronic inflammation happening in the body. If there's inflammation in the body, best believe it is affecting the brain. Homocysteine, um, vitamin D, thyroid, testosterone, these are all, uh, vitamin D, thyroid, testosterone are all important hormones we need to check. Hormonal balance is important for a healthy brain. Um, there's a whole uh, series of trainings I could do around, you know, female health and menstruation and how that affects our mental state and moods, you know, uh, just because of the hormonal imbalances, how it affects our relationships and all this kinds of stuff. But you want to make sure you check these, especially um, and also too, if you're on a weight loss journey, right? If you're having, uh, if you have thyroid imbalance, it can cause excess weight gain and make it really difficult to lose weight. And so that's something to be mindful of. So you can know that where you need to focus your energy is on healing your thyroid and balancing out those thyroid hormones, hormones, especially, you know, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, um, these things are super important. Omega threes, you want to check for that and make sure that you have, you're at a good level. Um, omega threes is something we need to be consuming every single day. This is important. It's the most important fat for our brain. Um, so we talked about mindset assessment sustenance is next 80, 20 rule is what I say. Okay. People who, what, we, what we've learned from behavioral science is that when folks are too rigid about anything they're trying to achieve, they tend to end up in uh, what I call um, an ant infestation. Ant is an acronym. It's an automatic negative thought. And that automatic negative thought is the all or nothing ant. You know, let's say this is just from a recent conversation I had with someone raw vegan for three months and um, then ends up in uh, an environment where she's triggered and she has chicken, right? And then is going into a mindset, oh, I fall off. It's not worth it. This is the all or nothing ant, right? Something happened and you relapsed, right? Meaning when I use that term, relapse, not everyone wants to be a hundred percent raw, right? And I don't make my clients follow a hundred percent raw diet if that's not something they're interested in, right? However, whatever your version of healthy is, right? And I know you have that. You have uh, in your head, your goal, your idea of what eating healthy, eating clean looks like for you. And that's what you want to achieve. But if you have a situation where you find yourself not following that, right? Something is triggering you, something happens. You have an emotional situation. For a lot of my clients, it's work, overwork, stress, tiredness, fatigue, right? That's causing them to gravitate towards ultra processed foods, right? This thing, when this happens, this is actually a learning situation, right? So first we wanna not overwhelm ourselves with the goal. Start with one thing, right? work with that one thing and also give yourself some grace. What we know from behavioral science is that if you try to be 100% all, all the time, you fall into this all or nothing mindset and that causes folks to relapse, to binge on unhealthy habits, but it will be so much easier for you to jump back on if you are curious and not furious about the behavior, about the situation. You turn those bad days into good data. Why did I eat the chicken? I know I don't want chicken. I know I don't even like chicken, but why? There's so much information there. And typically it's something emotional, psychological, you know, typically that we need to dive in and actually work on, right? We need to work on it. But change has its ups and downs. And in the downtimes is when you learn the most. This is a 
personal development journey. You may see it as I'm getting healthy, I'm trying to lose weight, you know, summer's coming around, whatever it is for you, right? Um, but this is really a personal development journey. You're on the journey to self-actualization in this process. Water is critical. Water is so important for your brain. We should be drinking at least half our body weight in ounces of in, uh, half our body weight in ounces of water. Um, it improves cognitive function. We have studies that show even mild dehydration can impair various aspects of brain function, including mood and cognitive function. And I'm going to show you um, what that actually looks like on this slide, <laughs> right? So this is the actual scan of a bodybuilder, right? So what you may not know, some of you may not know, but some of you might know that when you see these bodybuilders with their nice ripped abs and everything's all tight, right? And you can see all the lines and everything, right? Um, they've actually dehydrated themselves to look that ripped, right? Of course, there's muscle development there, right? You can't show something that's not there. But a, a good amount of us are walking around with the same kind of muscle development, but you wouldn't really see it because uh, water retention, <laughs> right? So they actually dehydrate themselves to really get that definition in that tone. And this guy in particular, he took Lasix um, to dehydrate himself and then got a scan. And you can see right here, prefrontal cortex down, temporal lobes, you know, this is just the, the dense, you can see this is low blood flow, right? When I see a whole hole, that's like no blood flow in that area, right? But so he was dehydrated for this scan, you can see on the left, and then came back, did a scan, well hydrated, and you see how, how much better his brain looks, right? You definitely don't want your pilot dehydrated flying you, okay, in the sky, <laughs> Right? You don't want a surgeon working on you that's dehydrated. We all need to be drinking water. It's important for everybody's safety. Um, water also increases strength by 19%, flushes out toxins, relieves constipation and uh, water retention. So, if, you know, I talked to a lot of people who have digestive issues too, bloating and puffiness. That could be from not drinking sufficient amounts of water, especially when you start eating 100% fiber for your diet, right? And you're you're quelling your hunger with fiber. Um, not only are you now trying to train this muscle to consume more, more food, more fiber, uh, and not giving it enough water to flush out, it will cause things to basically get stuck and stay in the digestive system and lodge and it, and bloating occurs, you know, the, the, the bacteria is feeding on that fiber and it's the bacteria actually causing the gas. So you want to drink water and flush that stuff out. It can cause stress. The body doesn't like to be dehydrated. It increases cortisol levels. And this is really the most cost-effective thing you could start tonight, right? Just making sure you drink sufficient amounts of water. Um, and I like to tell people in glass because we don't want toxic chemicals leaching into our water. Um, healthy fats and protein. I know we have a really smart group here. So I would love to hear in the chat, what are the healthy fats and protein we need to consume for a healthy brain and body? Remember that the same diet for a healthy brain and body is the same one for a healthy cardiovascular system is the same one for a uh, type two diabetes prevention and reversal. Yes, beans, nuts, and seeds. Caleb for the win, yup, very good. And I think I saw, I think I saw, yep, avocados. The most important fat for the brain. I think we talked about that. What did I say that was? I did mention it earlier. Okay, walnuts, yup. Omega-3s, very nice. Okay, so what are the plant sources of omega-3s? And, and someone mentioned here fish oils. Let me tell you why I don't encourage fish oil consumption. And I, I, I could do it in one line because we don't have much time. M schedule a movie night with your family, turn on Netflix and watch Seaspiracy. Okay, that's gonna be your homework. For, for the weekend coming up, okay? Watch sea spiracy with your family. Fish is not a health food, nor is anything coming from it. <laughs> um, yes, 
Walnuts. Okay, great. We have some people saying it here. Flax seeds, walnuts, chia seeds, hemp seeds, um, and also leafy greens, also cruciferous vegetables, all omega-3 uh, sources. And we want to avoid refined sugar, right? And this is important because foods either fuel success or they drive failure. Because we talked about it, there's stuff in the grocery store people are calling food that's not food. It's chemicals. And it's damaging our brain. It's, it's making us not even think right or even be right in our families, at work, in community. I listed here some healthy herbs, right? So we this lifestyle is not a bland lifestyle. It is a fun, enjoyable lifestyle. Like I told you, when I stepped into Cafe Gratitude and I saw what they were doing with raw fruits and vegetables, you don't even have to cook to have fun with your meals, right? All these great spices you can be adding that actually help your brain function better, boost blood flow, right? Have saffron has antidepressant effects. I actually use saffron as a tea. I just grab a, a couple threads, one or two, and put it in hot water and drink it as a tea. You have turmeric decreasing beta amyloid plaques in the brain, right? Just like how you get, you know, plaques in your arteries in your body, you can have plaques in the brain and that eventually leads to Alzheimer's disease. Rosemary enhances memory, thyme, sage, ginger, boost in metabolism, cayenne. I know in the West Indian community, we love cayenne, we love ginger. You know, these are all the foods our ancestors, all the, the spices our ancestors have been using and they don't just make the food taste good, but they actually are helpful for our brain. Now, if you want to know how to use these spices and healthy foods um, in a raw food way, right? I have a freebie for you. You can download on at rawfoodmealplanner.com or you can even go to samanthasalmon.com. It will take you to this page. At the top of the website, you'll see healthy digestion recipe book. Click, you can download it here and it will take you to this page where you can download this. You see on here, this image here, this is jackfruit, okay? It has the texture of meat, but it's an actual plant food, fiber rich, nutrient dense. You don't have to sacrifice enjoyment, flavor, texture, right? You can have it raw, you can have it cooked, <laughs> right? Whatever floats your boat or your fancy, but I know you all here love to lean in on raw. And I, even though I'm not 100% raw, I lean heavily on raw with my diet and lifestyle because it's so much easier to be healthy this way. It's harder to fall into unhealthy food habits with a raw food lifestyle, right? You just don't get that, that opportunity. So, wow, I'm doing so well on time. I would love for you to share in the chat three takeaways you took from um, you took away from this uh, presentation as we are about to wrap it up. I want to know what you got out of this tonight before we go into any questions. Yeah, Sharon, I love jackfruit. You know what else I love? Artichokes. Artichokes. I'm so into artichokes these days. Trader Joe's has two kinds. I know last time I was interviewed, the interviewer looked at me funny and she was like, artichokes at Trader Joe's. Yes, they have a grilled version. I'm not really too much a fan of that, but there's another artichoke one that's not grilled. It's not cooked. And, but it's in brine, right? You just drain it, you know, like you would sun-dried tomatoes and oil, you just drain it, cut it up. To me, it's like, it's like, it has the texture of chicken. It tastes so good and you don't have to add anything to it. It's just already so good. Vanessa, awesome. You can reverse diabetes in two weeks. Yes, type two, type two diabetes, yes. Allison got that as a takeaway and I'm so, uh, joyful to know that you you took that away. Let everybody know we need to share it far and wide that no one needs to suffer from this preventable, reversible disease. Yes, Arlene, your brain is involved in everything that you do. Everything. Do not be an ant. Yeah, so what I do with my uh, clients is we work on killing the ants. You kill the automatic negative thoughts. There's also um, exercises we do to tame the dragons, which is a Game of Thrones reference, right? I don't know if any of you have seen 
Game of Thrones where Daenerys, one of the main characters, she's the, the mother of dragons, right? They're a part of her, right? And we, we can't kill them, right? It's a part of us, but we can tame them. And typically that comes out as like, you know, um, our ancestral dragons, our wounded dragons, almost like our, our childhood wounds, the things that basically breathe fire on our unhealthy habits, This is which is why you take the steps forward to attack your healthy goals. And when it does not work out, right, you relapse, you assess the situation. You are doing an N of one study on yourself, right? You're doing an experiment on yourself. What happened to make me relapse? And you dig in and you do the emotional work. That's how you achieve success. Cheryl says, stay hydrated, get enough rest, know your why. Yes, lovely. So um, Dr. Tate, I'm, I'm ready and open for Q&A. Thank you all for being so awesome. I love talking about this and I love chatting with you all. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, all right. So if you wrote a question in the chat, please write it again, because it might have gotten mixed in um, with your comments. And um, Sam, so the first question that I have for you is, can you explain the connection between perhaps heart disease, heart health, brain health, Alzheimer's? Um, how are all of those things connected? Yes. So with heart disease, right, you have damage to the endothelial cells happening from our nutrition and lifestyle. The same thing with the brain. Like I told you, the brain is getting its nourishment from the blood flow. If the brain doesn't get the blood flow or different areas of the brain that's processing everything we think, feel, and do, and most important, I can't say even most importantly, but the, the prefrontal cortex is the CEO of our, of our brain, right? So Every action, even your decision to have a harmonious marriage, for example, right? In marriage, in long-term partnership, you probably figured out, you know, not everything I should say out loud, <laughs> right? Not every thought you think is the best thing to say, to keep a harmonious partnership, right? Or even a, a family relationship. Your prefrontal cortex, when it's properly nourished, right? That means eating the right foods, getting physical activity, uh, making sure your hormones are balanced and your stress is mitigated. Um, it will stop you. It will. It's thinking through the consequences. It's allowing you to pause. I don't need to speak in this moment. If you're high off sugar, right? Um, you're going to be, you know, <laughs> yelling scream because first of all you're irritable have you ever had that experience i know a lot of people have had that experience when you consume sugar we have spec scans that show it's lighting up in the same areas of the brain as when people are high off crack cocaine right so you're being impacted the same way So hopefully that helped. And with type 2 diabetes and obesity, these are all risk factors. Type 2 diabetes, the lifestyle gets you there. That same lifestyle is causing damage to the blood vessels. Obesity, the, the excess fat, all of that stuff has toxins in it. The lifestyle that's accumulating those toxins, that excess fat, damaging the brain, damaging the blood vessels, the cardiovascular system, all of it's related. And then our, our brain is not getting the proper nourishment. Now, you know, our deep limbic system is, is being hurt and harmed. And that's where, you know, anxiety and depression, low mood is coming from. We see that folks are eating yellow 40, dye number 40, and all of this chemicals and stuff in the food, even young children. And they're, you know, having high rates of, of depression and even suicide. I mean, this is, it's a whole, um, it's, it's unethical in my opinion, right? That, that in our society, this is being sold to kids, being sold to adults. Adults are giving it to kids because they are not even aware of the scope of the damage that's happening, right? Our brains are not fully developed until our mid twenties. Okay. What does that mean when we talk about this type of food, right? The, the last step of this process is myelinization, which happens from the back to the front of the brain. And myelinization is basically the wrapping, the coating of um, 
the, the nerve cells in the brain. If our brains are not fully developed until mid twenties, when we have chemicals that impact the brain so much that is causing blood flow constriction in these different areas, we can arrest development, right? That's why substance abuse is so bad. The alcohol, we don't want our kids to drink alcohol because it can arrest development. We don't want them doing drugs, but guess what? Sugar is a drug, refined sugar. These chemicals, these artificial flavorings and dyes and stuff in the cereals that they have, you know, tigers and all these cute characters. I was, I was a victim of this before as a child. I used to love Frosted Flakes, Honey Nut Cheerios. I used to love all that stuff, you know? But like I said, you are not stuck with the brain you have. You could change it. You can change it. You make the change for yourself and you become a model for the entire family. And I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, right? People don't like to be told what to do, especially young kids, but they will follow in your leadership. We, we mimic as young people what we see around us from the adults. I could go on forever. So let me, let me <laughs> Um, can you touch on the macronutrients um, that are important for the brain? Macronutrients, you just want to have a balanced, um, balanced diet, right? So in the plant food, plant food world, which is where we want to focus, right? There's, it's not worth it to focus outside of that because um, there's nothing healthy there. So in the plant food world, all of that is carbs. So, okay, check. We're all getting carbs. As long as you're eating, you're getting carbs. Uh, fat is super important. Omega-3 fatty acids in particular um, is important. Um, and then protein, protein is in pretty much everything, right? You just wanna make sure you're eating enough, uh, one, to be satisfied. And two, like I said, when you check those BMI numbers and you're looking at body composition, I go into a little bit more detail um, with my clients in terms of like um, energy consumption, right? And in, in, in all of this, just to make sure you're eating enough, especially depending on the diet. Because when there's, there's when folks on the standard American diet eating all sorts of things, they tend to get caught up in diet culture, which has them restricting a lot. And then if they decide to move over into a raw food lifestyle, that is not really helpful. Now you're eating a more wholesome diet and you can run the risk from people, right? Obviously, if you're obese, this is not a risk factor, right? Which is why there's different strategies depending on where you are. But for some people, they can end up underweight. So if you're normal weight and you go to 100% raw, you need to dial in a little bit, a little bit more, right? So when I first went 100% raw, um, I, at that time, like I, I, I went high raw, basically lost 20 pounds, got closer to hundred percent raw, got down to 115. And, um, that time I did count my calories because I wanted to make sure that I didn't get too skinny, you know? <laughs> so I wanted to make sure I was eating enough, but understanding what that enough is, is important because your body, even at rest is burning calories is burning energy. Your brain is always working, even while you're sleeping, right? You're breathing, breathing takes energy, your heart pumping takes energy. So you want to keep your metabolic health working well. So you want to make sure you're eating enough. Um, so depending on, you know, the diet you choose for yourself, where you feel like you thrive and what your health goals are, where you're starting from, you know, there's some things to keep in mind there. But in terms of um macrobiotic, I mean, uh, macro, uh, balance, you know, with your, with your meals, like I would just say, don't quite worry about it, but make sure you're consuming omega threes on a daily basis. Does eating raw foods and nuts, um, help your hair to grow? <laughs> oh, I saw that. You know what? I don't know. I had, I, uh, uh, the the Raw Food Health Empowerment Summit I hosted a few years ago, I had a guest on there by the name of Matt, and I'm blanking on his last name right now. Um, but he went on a journey trying to grow his hair, hair back on a raw food lifestyle, and it was not successful. So I, I don't really know <laughs> what can do it, but I do know that um, 
you know, and two, it, I think it really depends on what's happened with the hair follicle and all that, but that's not my specialty. So I don't really know, but I, and I haven't really heard of what has been successful for folks in terms of diet for that. Um, what do you do about cravings uh, when some, when the person goes on restrictive dieting? Uh, it's all they can think about. Yeah, yeah. So um, I have always fought cravings with food, right? So like I said, fat, sugar, salt, right? This is what this is what is keeping us addicted, according to that book. Go run and get that book for sure. Read it. <laughs> Um, I can't remember the name of the author, and I'm not sure if it's fat, sugar, salt, or sugar, fat, salt, something like that. But um, if you are having a craving for something sweet, like cookies or something like that, make sure your house is stocked or your workplace even with fruits, dates, you know, um, make raw vegan desserts like brownies and uh, apple pie or raw vegan cheesecake, you know, uh, truffle balls, you know have that stuff on hand. I find fruits, smoothies, juices, you know, these things are really quick and easy. Raisins um, to grab and eat. Eat to fullness and satisfaction. You know, don't worry at that point, don't worry about quantity because right now you're just trying to focus on consistency of healthy habit. So I wouldn't even worry about quantity so much and like, oh, am I eating too much? No, you're trying to kill the craving. And once you get full, you're not really gonna crave, right? And you're getting full off the fiber and full off the water from what you're consuming. Um, if you are like me and you love savory stuff. So my thing was very much chips, right? I love chips. <laughs> Even now, I mean, we're basically like the test rats we hear about in these scientific studies. When I hear plastic crinkling, I'm like, what's that? What's that? What you got? <laughs> you know? When, and especially I shop at Trader Joe's because one of the things I tell my people to do is like find the most affordable grocery store in your neighborhood and, and shop there. Build your whole meal plan around it. So Trader Joe's is mine. And in that place, they love to fill it with, um, you know, chips, which I totally understand, especially after working in equitable food oriented development that, you know, the business model for these stores is to have a lot of this stuff that has a, a long shelf life, right? That's where the margins are. They, they're they not really making money off the produce, you know, and this is how capitalism works. They, they need to stay in business so we get access to food. And so there has to be a good balance for the community. Um, so when I walk in Trader Joe's, you know, I feel like that whole aisle is calling my name, right? But what I do is I make a note in my head, you know, when I get home, I'm eating my thing is I love cruciferous vegetables. I love kale. I think everybody should. I heard, I saw quickly in the chat, somebody mentioned Wagovi, Ozempic. The best thing you could do for yourself on a weight loss journey, metabolic health journey, cancer prevention journey is get into cruciferous vegetables. Let that be the bulk of your meals, right? You are going to feel full. It's not going to add any kind of calorie where you have to actually track your digestive system will get so much better, less gas, less bloating, especially if you're drinking enough water, right? Your whole health will transform by focusing on crucifers, okay? And leafy green vegetables. But I spice my stuff. So I use sea salt. I use coconut aminos. You know, I use all the, the spices and seasonings I showed you and have, I go home and have a nice, big, savory meal, either it be a salad or I'll have uh, roasted uh, Brussels sprouts and asparagus. I mean, after reading Dr. Greger's How Not to Age that recently came out, you know, I'm roasting a lot less now, even though that's my favorite way to have Brussels sprouts, but it's really good raw too. And you season it very well apple cider vinegar, coconut aminos, um, sea salt, you know, and there are other ways, seaweeds. I have dulse flakes and kelp flakes that I can add on, sesame seeds and different mixed things that are kind of like salt substitutes. They add a, a savory, salty flavor without any salt, right? But that's how you get your fix. You get your fix from the food, but you got to understand what is it you actually want, right? Without the chemicals. So you fix it with food. Beyond that now, like I mentioned, 
the person I talked to who was doing great on raw, but then got triggered and ended up eating food that she didn't want to eat, that she didn't even like, that she considered not to be healthy, right? Other people who are dealing with this when they have stressful work situations, they're tired, right? Um, I have I have a free training coming up actually called um, Beat Stress Eating, where we're going to be going deeper into this to avoid relapse. But your first plan of action is to fight the craving with food, healthy food. Um, too much crucifers. Okay, so the the sorry, uh, D Barclay. Too much crucifers can cause thyroid issues. I am not aware of this. I know people with thyroid issues have been advised not to have crucifers. From my understanding, um, based on the studies, if you um, uh, ferment them, you can have you can eat them because the goitrogens are lost in the fermentation process, but the even the idea of of too much um will you hit that point right when you're having a balanced diet so like if i have a pound of brussels sprouts for the day is that going to cause a thyroid dysfunction i would say not i've been doing this <laughs> i would say not you know um people doing crazy extremes 10 pounds i mean i feel like you would have to stretch the stomach to ridiculous unseen uh territories to get to that level of of too much but if you do have concerns about it like i said there's lots of other greens leafy greens and things like that but there are ways to work a to work around it um what if uh i'm sorry you offer classes <laughs> yeah so i have um I have a free training coming up. So for folks who are on my email list, um, and if you sign up to get the Healthy Digestion Recipe book, you'll probably get an invite later uh, this month, or I know in April, I think I'm doing that training, um, Beat Stress Eating, but when we're diving deep into this, and then I have a program called um, Conquer, uh, Conquer Your Cravings. It's a three month intensive where we go into actual coaching on killing the ants, uh, taming the dragons. So we go really deep um, into like the emotional aspects of this lifestyle. When you start to embark on a raw vegan diet or a high raw diet, you don't have the crutches of unhealthy foods to make, to, to make you match like for me in my experience, it was always like matching the bad feeling with the food, right? So if, if I felt low, depressed, sad, stress, I'm eating the food to feel heavy, to match how I'm emotionally feeling. And when you take away that substance, all you're left with is you. So you actually have to face the issue head on. You don't have alcohol to help you you don't have chips to help you. You don't have cookies. You don't have any of the refined sugars or the, any drugs, right? Because we're all living healthy lifestyle. So we're not using, <laughs> right, any, any, any drugs. So we have to actually do the personal work, the self-development work, the journey, the inner journey to mastery. And, and this this is not just a, you're, you master your mind, you master your emotions. This is what emotional intelligence looks like, right? There's a journey to get there. And um, the vehicle can be your health and wellness journey, your nutrition. Um, is it safe to eat raw mushrooms? Um, and if you asked a question and I didn't ask it, please type it again because they're coming in really fast. So is it safe to eat raw mushrooms? Yeah, according to Dr. Gregor, uh, nutritionfacts.org shout out to him uh, uh no most of them most of the mushrooms you can't I think there's like one that you can eat raw but I err on the side of caution and just you know if, if you want to eat mushrooms uh cook it just to be safe okay um and just quick announcement Dr. Gregor will be with us on March 28th on Thursday the 28th mm -hmm. and our book this month um book suggestion this month is how not to age so Nice. Clearly, Sam endorses it. Yes, and I would I'll just like to underscore his chapter on glycation because I know his book is really focused on 
you know, encouraging people to eat more plant-based, but that chapter on AGEs, where they were really intentional about the acronym AGE, right, AGEs, um, and the, the process on glycation. So when you read that book, pay attention to what he's saying, because that is some strong evidence for why we really need to be emphasizing on raw foods. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm leave that as a little taster for you. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. Definitely read it, read that chapter. Um, but that is, it's like the most powerful evidence um, to date, in my opinion, other than of course our personal experience. So much of us are having personal experiences eating raw, but now we see scientifically why we feel so good is because of ages. <laughs> We're consuming less, uh, there's less glycation happening in the body when we eat raw foods. Um, what about people who cannot eat leafy green vegetables? What do you suggest for them? That's interesting. I've never heard of this. And um, I would love for you to email me at info at rawfoodmealplanner.com and educate me as to why you can't eat leafy green vegetables. I'm definitely, and this is a really serious, like I'm curious to know why. I've never heard of such a thing. Um, but what is if the there, if oh. there, sorry, yeah, if there are foods, there are healthy foods that some people cannot consume, right? Um, they are, they could be, you know, maybe you have digestive issues with FODMAPs, which are, it's just an acronym for different types of sugars. Um, maybe you have histamine issues going on. So there may be some food intolerances and there's, there's a process that we typically take people on to heal the gut to be able to incorporate those foods later on. Because, you know, a lot of the unhealthy foods and habits that we have from our childhood, from our past, and medication, stress, different things, and different procedures can disrupt the gut microbiome and disrupt the gut lining. And um, that typically takes about two years to heal um, in the most serious, in, in some serious cases, right? Um, so if you if you're, in a situation like that, where there's like a plant food that you can't consume, not leafy greens. I've never heard of leafy greens, you know, being uh, crucifers. Yeah. Can sometimes like cauliflower and thing can, and broccoli can be um, high FODMAP foods, but you don't really have to completely eliminate them. This is just a matter of quantity and frequency. Uh, but if you're in a situation where you have to, uh, to get your microbiome back in balance, you know, there's a way to do that safely to make sure you're getting proper nutrition and then to, you know, um, get back on once your gut is, is healed. Okay. Uh, what is the name of the book that you recommended for reversing type, type two diabetes? Oh, um, well, the book that I read first, uh, was Dr. Neil Barnard's, um, program for reversing type two diabetes. Now I would recommend a more recent book called uh, Mastering Diabetes by Robbie uh, Kambada. No, Robbie Barbaro and Cyrus Kambada. Um, and it covers gestational diabetes 1.5, um, type one, and um, yeah, all of it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, now, can dementia be reversed through diet? Yeah, I saw that. So like I said, dead tissue cannot be uh, cannot come back online. Um, however, sometimes we see elderly acting out in some peculiar and strange ways that are early signs of dementia. For example, um, and you know, you will notice it, right? Because if they're people you you love and you're around them a lot, you notice, oh, this is a little off. You know, maybe you want to get them taken to a doctor and check to see where they are. Maybe it's mild cognitive impairment. You know, at that point, there's still time, possibly, to do something and and reverse it and and repair it, help the brain. Um, issues like. Uh, symptoms of attention deficit disorder, especially for folks who are 60 plus, right? They're not focused, they're, um, they have a hard time scheduling, you know, you know, symptoms around ADD, that's also a sign of uh, 
early onset dementia, which yes, you can, you can heal and, and work on reversing that, right? They don't have the diagnosis yet of dementia, but like I said, it takes about 20 to 50 years for that diagnosis to develop. You know, there's a series of damage that has to happen before you, someone would get that diagnosis. What are your thoughts on, it's just a general, it says, what are your thoughts on plant-based products sold in stores? But I don't know um, what that's asking. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, if you're talking about processed foods, like fake meats, fake cheeses and stuff like that, this is processed food. So that's why you have vegans who are not necessarily healthy, which is why the emphasis is on whole food. And, and I don't say whole food plant-based. I know a lot of um, doctors, I, I can't remember if it's Esselstyn or, or Caldwell who coined the term, I can't remember, a whole food plant-based, but I don't even say whole food plant-based because plant-based means, you know, plant-based is basically what my ancestors were eating in Jamaica, West Indies. And at that time, that, that was fine, right? They would have meat probably once a year, once a month or something like that because people couldn't afford to have it breakfast, lunch, dinner like we have now, right? Um, we are living in a different time right now. The, the amount of chemicals that we are being exposed to, we have to really be intentional. And not only the chemicals, like we have plastics in our waterways, right? In the, in the fish that folks are eating, right? Plus DDT and all sorts of other chemicals. Definitely watch the spiracy. Um, but we also have uh, all of the chemicals that's being sprayed on farmland and in our neighbor's yards, right? Pesticides and, and, and different things like this that's affecting our hormonal balance. How do we fight? In this, it's not just a toxic food environment, but the environment itself is just, it's not the same environment as our grandmothers and great grandmothers, right? We are living in a different time. And then not only does our body have to deal with this, but we've already gone through COVID. Either you've had the virus or you didn't have the virus. You had the vaccine, you had the infection, whatever. This stuff, the virus, the vaccine, all of this changes our microbiome changes our immune system. We are we are different now, all of us on this side, right? Which is why I emphasize a lot the crucifers. The crucifers are fighting on our behalf to make our immune system strong, you know? And this is our best fight, in my opinion, amongst this, this onslaught of this new time that we're in, you know, the chemical onslaught that we're that we're under. Okay. Um, can stroke effects be reversed with a plant-based diet? Can stroke, is that what stroke you Stroke effects, can stroke, stroke effects. Stroke effects. Yeah, so what we saw there was um, lack of blood flow. So depending on, on the damage, you know, um, definitely. And the, the best way for folks to, to test that, like, honestly, to get really granular about it is to do a spec scan. If you want to see where you are, make the changes and then do another spec scan to see the improvements. Um, for folks who don't want to do that, right. Which not everybody has to, but maybe there's another marker that you're looking to achieve. So, you've experienced a, a stroke and maybe you're having memory issues. Yes, there are things that we can do to uh, improve memory recall, um, improve memory function. I have a whole program on that. Um, so yeah, I mean, the thing is the only way you know if it's dead tissue that's not gonna come back online is to see a doctor and to actually do a physical scan. Right, they have different scans. Spec scan shows blood flow. There's MRI that's showing the 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 anatomy is showing a little bit more detail on the physical structure, um, and they have some other different types of scans. But your your doctor would be able to tell you um, 
if the tissue is dead and completely irreversible. In some cases, I know there's a lot of doctors who think, you know, everything is just non-reversible. <laughs> so it gets a little tricky, but if you need a recommendation, you could always um, reach out to me at info at raw food meal planner, and I can make a recommendation because we have functional medicine doctors. We have um, like Amen clinics who are in alignment with that. They have a more functional approach. And the reason why too, is because Dr. Amen, he used to prescribe a lot of pharmaceutical drugs as a psychiatrist. Um, but then he saw on the spec scans, how those pharma drugs were, was affecting blood flow. And some of the drugs were making people's condition worse, right? Like Prozac and some of these other drugs were making folks worse. And um, it wasn't the right thing for them, which is why, um, you know, and we know that now because of the scans, right? Because how can you treat something you never, you never test, you never check, right? He says, you know, psychiatrist is the only profession where they treat an organ that they don't check, <laughs> you know? A surgeon is not going to do heart surgery unless they actually look at what's going on with the heart before they go in there to make any changes, right? Um, when you are introducing the outside environment in, it will make a change. That anytime you put something in your mouth, uh, you are introducing the outside environment in. So um, yeah, in terms of to, to see if you're in a position where um, I think the, the mere fact that you, if, if it's you, maybe you're talking about someone you know. But if you're on this call right now, there were a series of things you had to do to get on this Zoom call. So you're in a good position to heal whatever cognitive decline you're experiencing. And for a lot of us, Alzheimer's and all this cholesterol buildup and plaque and things that this starts happening since we're children because we're raised in this toxic food environment, right? Eating unhealthy food substances. But if it's someone that you know, who may be too far gone, um, you know, that's a possibility, you know, but the, the tissue, cause the tissue, if the tissue is dead, then you can't reverse it. Right. Um, but from, for most of us, we still are in a good place where we can reverse the damage that has been done. All right. Let's just take one more question. What is the cost to get a brain scan and can you get it from your regular doctor? Um, the spec scans are done at Amen Clinics and you would have to reach out to them to, to find out what the cost is for that. <clears throat> All right, everyone. So as I shared um, at the beginning of the meeting, uh, Sam would like to offer a series um, to the Heart Smarts community that will delve deeper into these topics. Sam, can you share a little bit more about what that series would involve? Yes. In the series, we dive deeper into the brain, the different areas of the brain, um, what they control, how to keep them well. So we have good cognitive abilities, right? Because our brain is our advantage or disadvantage in this life, right? Most of us are as for the working professionals on the call, most of us are making money in this day and age from our minds and not from our bodies, right? Back in the day, folks had to labor for, for their earnings, now physical labor, but now we're doing a lot of mental labor. So having sharp cognitive function is really important. But also for our seniors, it's really important because a lot of them are watching the grandkids, they're um, you know, supporting their children in all sorts of ways. So like I talked about having the emotional space, the, the mental uh, capacity to hold space for your family members, to have patience, to have love, to have empathy, right? To not be irritable and angry and frustrated all the time. We need a healthy working brain for that. We go into the health of the gut microbiome because if you don't have a healthy gut, you cannot have a healthy brain. They work together. Um, and so we we dive deep into that. So we go we go really deep on how what this actually looks like for you. What do you actually do? Today was just a starting point to get your mindset ready on that. But then we go we dive deeper on how to live a brain healthy lifestyle and actually be a health leader in your home, in your family, in your community to be a model, an exemplar for people to follow. Awesome. And so um, for those of you not in the HeartSmarts community or in the HeartSmarts program right now, 
if you are interested in joining this group, which I think we're going to start in April, um, you can send me an email and I will add you to the list for that. All right. And then Sam, if you can just share um, any of your other contact information and then. Uh, sure, where they yeah. Can my website is rawfoodmealplanner.com, or you could go to samanthasalmon.com. That's S-A-L-M-O-N.com. It'll take you to the same place. Um, and all my socials are there. My podcast is there. Um, the digestion, healthy digestion recipe book is there. Um, so yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, Sam, thank you again for being with here with us tonight. Uh, you've been amazing. Thanks. I think You've given us a lot to think about, about the brain. And so um, we look forward to uh, the series in um, April as well. So I'm just going to ask everyone to um, come off mute and share your gratitude uh, with Sam. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. 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 Thank you.